obviously those lean years um, were heartbreaking for, for players that have been around the club in the, in the successful times, especially being from the coast. You know, you've got all your family, all your friends, everyone supports the club and, um, you know, there's nothing worse than, you know, when, when the team's not doing well, you, you're copping it from all angles. Um, certain managers being in there and obviously in hindsight now you look back and the, the wrong decisions were made, not the right people for the club. Uh, not the right people for the community and and I think you know in a salary cap league you're going to pay for that for a long time you, you know you make bad decisions for one year it's probably going to last for three or four years for you to turn that and around. That affect it with a few overseas players that come in as well? Yeah exactly right. and I think in that period there the decisions weren't right you know I see on the you know Usain Bolt coming in I remember it was my I'd come back from Sydney FC at the time and you know a great marketing ploy but it just it just wasn't the right time to, for the Mariners. I remember texting you, you were calling the friendly game yeah. at MacArthur going, why, why can you not tell the truth about this, what's going on? And yeah, you've yeah. been basically told to keep your mouth shut. Well, yeah, you knew it was a marketing ploy from the start. But you get back to not having the right people involved. As a, for me, there's a real seminal moment in that dark point. And there was a time when you obviously went off to Sydney and Arnie, when you scored two goals against them, it was a two in one game. And, you, and he turns around in the crowd and he went, you didn't want him. The people in the club didn't want you here or they didn't think you were valuable enough a person to keep around, which anyone who's from this area and who knows you well knows full well that you're the heart and soul of the club and that you'd do anything for and you would never undermine any manager or anything along those lines. You always did what was best for the club and the community. And for me, the fact that you had to leave to go away to Sydney, which I know you didn't want to do, but you went there and then obviously enjoyed your time and were successful and then... It took them to realise, hey, you know, we need this guy back. Yeah, well, that was Monty. Uh, when I, you know, I went to Sydney, obviously, as you said, I, I had to go to Sydney and I'm forever grateful for Sydney giving me that opportunity. And I love, the, you know, they're my second club. I win a championship there and, and uh, what they did for me and my family in the period where, you know, as you say, those people in those positions made those decisions. But uh, it was Monty after three years at Sydney that they wanted to keep me. But, you know, Monty rang me up and asked for a coffee and said he was going to be assistant coach. He wanted me to be the first player to bring it back to the club. Um, so I think he knew the process that needed to start to fix all those bad decisions over that, that period. Another good decision this year is bringing back Vuka. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. yeah. been there for day one, knows the club through and through. He's a winner. He's, he's great with the player, great with everybody. He's had a fantastic season. So credit to Monty and the team for getting him back. And it's good to see the club because I think um, Sean Mielekamp said, you know, you go and hit rock bottom and the Mariners just kept going. They kept dr drilling through. And I think we're all pretty honest and, uh, you know, we're pretty honest in our appraisal of ourselves and our region. And I got caught, you know, when I got caught calling the club effing dog shit, their performance. Um, that was actually the producer in my ear, who's a Mariners fan, going, what the fuck is going on with this place? And I, we just had an honest conversation about where the club is, and obviously it got caught on camera, but do you know what? As soon as that got out, first person to talk to me, Sean Mielekamp, I went downstairs, I said, look, I've said this, I think it's gonna come out, and he said, Maka, you're an ex-player who's passionate about the club, and all you've said is the truth. It's not good enough. And that's what I've liked about Sean all along is, even though the ownership stuff was there and he was in charge and he was fighting against the losing battle at times, he always said, this isn't good enough. This isn't where we want to be. We're not going to accept this. We need to do better. Uh, and now it's great to see that the club has realised those mistakes, have put the right people in place, uh, him and Monty, and, and there's plenty of others, you yourself, who have been involved in that, to see now the club come from that depths to be where it is now just I think makes the story even better. You look now and the things that are put in place um, I think we're okay now for a few years I'd like to think back then we really didn't have a succession plan you know we lo we are going to be a selling club we're a development club that's the business model that's fine but now we've got the academy and the youth team to back it up we can sell three or four and bring the next three or four through. That's the whole model. And, and that's Monty's helped Monty that because he, he was the there for the two years. Now there, you know, it's the fruits are coming through now that Monty brought into the club those years ago, yeah. but you know, and, and now it's, it's just the same, it's just a conveyor belt at the moment. All these young players coming through and they're all handling themselves very, very well. That's why you see now so many players wanting to come to the Mariners, young guys, because they can see that well, if I do, it doesn't matter what age I am, where I'm from, whatever it is. If I go there and I work my backside off and I, and I show that I'm good enough, I'll get an opportunity. And that's what we're seeing now. You look, look, Niz, you know, told his whole career you're not good enough uh, and too small and all this stuff. Now, it, for me, he's been one of the integral parts of, of the club. There's so many 
others you could go through faz and all these young oh, fellas players that a bit you know nectar triantis couldn't get a look in at western mm -hmm. sydney you know yeah. he comes to us on a scholarship and after two weeks of training monty's like he's an a-league contract in the ground last week packed out first time ever for the football match and you look around and there's so many young people there and you know we're out on the pitch and people are calling us over to get a photo with their kids and the kids have no idea who we are but they've got a new you've got a new set of players come through and a new set a new generation coming through who sees them as their heroes and you can see that momentum building you know it takes a long time to build that fan base in a club as we all know it takes generations but that's good to see that's you know multiplying uh, that's something that you guys started yeah. back from the very beginning making the grand final is obviously huge for everyone involved in the club you know whether you worked at the club played at the club um past or present you know the community you know how you know the fans are the ones that have suffered the most for all those lean years you know as we say players come and go and and staff come and go but the fans are always there uh, i think they suffer the most so Look, I'm, I'm just so happy and, and proud that the, the team and the, the club has been able to get to where they have this year and um, sort of repay all those people that have stuck by the club for this long. And it was great to see that, you know, 20,000 at um, a Central Coast Stadium the other night was, was absolutely huge. You know, we were standing on the ground and just, it was so good. Just really looking forward to the game and, and, and just proud of everyone for making it. Yeah, I think you touched on it earlier with uh, 10 years ago and, you know, we've occasionally with the old boys go out for a quiet beer now and then and it's funny because you get 20, 22 year olds ask you for a photo but you, what you don't remember is they were 10, 11, 12 back then, you know, we were their heroes. So now you see all the 8, 9, 10 year olds, they got new heroes and they're going to be 20 and 10 years time, you know, it's that whole new generation, the whole new buzz for the coast, for the kids. Uh, football just gets that whole lift in the area. There seems to be good things in place now to really sustain that longevity now. You know, just to compete and just to, to be uh, that team that, that people can be proud of, we've got that now. For me, is, it just gives the Central Coast, obviously being the Mayor for four years and being involved in regional development on the coast, it just brings that um, proudness to people you just see people walking about a spring, they step it. You go to the shops, you go to your local cafe, they're, they're just a buzz about the place now. 2013, when I was a mayor, I got the street parade and 12,000 people in mid. I wasn't there, I was at a wedding for one of the girls who used to work at the club, Sarah Buggy, for year one, and I had to go to her wedding. I want to be at a street parade. Yeah. I want to be there and be part of that. Every now and again, I watch it on YouTube and it's amazing, everybody on the bus and all in the parking. I, I want to see that because what it does for Gosford, Central Coast is amazing. And for me, Manor's getting the grand final, getting a chance to win and have that happen again. That's putting the pressure on David Farmer and Central Coast Council. <laughs> but we'll be expecting a victory parade through the main streets. So, um, Well, I think making the grand final for the Mariners is, uh, for me, Simon, I think you touched on it. it. Ultimately, it comes back to the fans. Yes, there's been a lot of hard work put in by people at the club over a long time. Per capita, when you take the average fan, the average um, crowd for the Mariners, for the, the fan base the, or the catchment area, this area surpasses everyone. Um, you know, to have such a small catchment area but still get 7,500 average crowd every year, they're the people who have been coming and you know what, they were getting three and 4,000 still. You go, oh, it doesn't look too good. But when it's a, the team was perpetually... Let's be honest, underperforming and, and, and garbage. Second or last. And, and Second or last or last. there's yeah. still that small catchment area. It's still not bad. But now those people are getting rewarded for their faith. And, you know, of course, people, when you're successful, will jump on board and go, we want to be a part of it. But that's part of it. And now those people hopefully go to this grand final. If they win, we'll see them coming next year. And they, they'll be walking around with pride with their Mariner shirts on and, and looking at these guys as, as heroes, as rightly they should. So just to give that hope that there wasn't, didn't seem to be any hope for so long, and now it's been realised through a lot of hard work, hope for those fans that that street parade can happen and uh, everyone can be there to celebrate the successes that the Monty and his team and the whole club have put on. The Isuzu Ute A-League Grand Final is here. All drama, all noise, all action. Watch Melbourne City and Central Coast Mariners go all in to be crowned champions. Experience it live. Search A-League's tickets.